Hey, g'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, some engine oil sample results and uh, specifically how that's going to relate to the oil cooler change out that I carried out at the end of last year. Now, I've had a few comments uh, on the cooler change out uh, videos and how I identified the issue, so uh, I'll run this all through with you now. And uh, if you're interested in this guide series, for the oil cooler change out, uh, then and you haven't checked it out, uh, then have a look at the card and I'll whack up on the screen uh, sometime there now. Uh, obviously if you're new to this channel, uh, welcome. Uh, I normally do a lot of mechanical, sort of technical guide style videos, uh, but today is going to be something a little different. Uh, so please uh, consider like and dislike comment, share, uh, or subscribe. So, look, I could talk for an hour and a half by or more on this subject, uh, but I'll keep the info as brief as I can. Uh, if you'd like to know more on any particular part of this subject, then uh, throw a comment below uh, and I'll answer in more detail. Uh, if there's any more demand for, for this, I'll do a separate video on the subject. Analyzing oil sample results is uh, just one part of my normal day job, so I'm pretty well versed in this subject. Uh, basically, I'll give you a real quick rundown of what we're looking at, and uh, then we'll move on to the actual coolant contamination issue. So, to start with, we'll go back to the latest oil sample results before the coolant contamination started to become an issue. Now, what we're looking at here is the most recent uh, sample on the left and which moves across the older soil sample on the right. So at this point we're at uh, May 2018. As you can see the time on this unit and uh, compartment age, uh, that's how many kilometres are on this engine and chassis at the time of this sample. Uh, obviously being the original engine uh, these two figures are the same. At the top you can see the brand and type of oil and the oil grade. Uh, so in this case we've got a Valvoline Simpower uh, 50840 and here you can see the recorded kilometres on the oil has done at the time of sample uh, along with the filter and finally the details on if the oil was changed or not. Moving down to this part we have all the test information results. So all figures in this top section uh, are values in parts per million so we start up with metals, uh, which is aluminium, nickel, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin and silver. All these can relate to various parts within the engine, apart from aluminium, which, uh, which along with being a wear metal, can also come from dirt ingress, in which case we'd see a corresponding rise in silicon uh, along with that. So the remaining contaminants here, in this section now, are silicon, uh, potassium, molybdenum, boron, magnesium, calcium, zinc, phosphorus and lithium. So these uh, bottom six here, uh, the moly, boron, magnesium, calcium, zinc and phosphorus, they're all additives in the oil and not contaminants as such. Uh, apart from boron, uh, as that can also be a contaminant from coolants. And moving down we've got the physical test, so this contains water, percentage, fuel percentage, soot percentage, oil viscosity, now the units for this uh, centre stokes and for engine oils they're measured at 100 degrees celsius uh, and for reference uh, SA40 uh, oil viscosity should be between 12 and a half uh, to 16.3 centre stokes. We then have a total base number or TBN which is a measurement of the oil's alkalinity reserve, it's basically combustion byproducts and reactions in the oil. Uh, can form acids, so the additive's job is to neutralise them. The TBN number will decrease as the additives get used up. Uh, for memory, this oil uh, is, has a new TBN of about 10, I think. Uh, so really with that, there's plenty of reserve left, even with the, uh, the 21,000 Ks on this oil. PQ index, this is a measurement of all the ferrous material in the sample. Uh, I'd normally look at that in combination with the elemental iron up here, mainly because this one here has a limit of about 10 microns particle size that these the machines can actually read when they come up with this data. 
The last three, nitration, oxidation, and sulfation, they're all results of different reactions within the oil with normal use. I won't go too much into more on those right now. Anyway, that's a real quick overview of what information an oil sample will give you. So let's move on to the next sample. And this is where the, the coolant contamination showed up. Just so you're aware, the levels that are showing up here are not detectable uh, by a visual inspection at all. So first up, you'll see we have a little higher uh, levels of iron and lead. Uh, these are really just an accumulation of wear over the extended time of the oil, which is 24,500 Ks. So the indications of coolant are the abnormal levels of sodium and potassium. And, and you can see these are, are well out of uh, well out from the previous historical trends. Uh, also worth noting, oil got changed at this sample. So this was February 2018. So in order to check if this was a bad sample, I took another sample at 11,000 Ks on the next oil uh, with no oil change. Uh, so as you can see, the sodium and potassium levels uh, were lower. With the sodium levels, they're around the same as the previous history. The uh, potassium, however, was slightly above the normal uh, previous normal range. So let's move on to the next oil change, which was at 19,000 Ks, thereabouts. And the sodium and potassium levels are elevated again, so the issue is still present. So at this stage, I'm thinking that, uh, that this is a real issue. Uh, however, I want to trend it to monitor if the condition is getting worse or not. So and at this stage, I'm also starting to think what the cause of this could be. So let's just skip forward to the last oil sample before the oil cool was changed out. So you can see we're now at December 2020 and the corn contamination has not gotten really any worse with the levels relatively consistent throughout this whole time. Now, the oil change intervals, I've dropped slightly at this stage uh, and oil has been changed out of each sample. Now, you may be wondering why the length of time from the initial detection uh, to the change out of the oil cooler. Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, you don't make a call on a single oil sample. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to trend that issue and see if, uh, if it was a stable or a deteriorating uh, problem. And two, the possible sources of uh, coolant contamination are mainly a head gasket and the oil core. So obviously I can't tell which head this would be from an oil sample, so it would uh, most likely be the, the cause. So if, if that was the cause, then I'd have to look at doing both heads. Uh, this looks like to be a real tight job on the, in the D3 for an in-situ change without probably removing a, a uh, body. And to be honest, I'm not sure this would probably be worth the effort on this particular car, considering the age and kilometers. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I decided to change out the oil cooler, considering it's a relatively cheap part. And from the information I've gathered uh, on various internet forums, the oil cooler does seem to be uh, the more common uh, failure point than a head gasket. Uh, so obviously now the question is, after this oil cooler has been changed out, have I solved the issue? Well, let's go check out the current sample and, and see what's, uh, what's happened. So as you can see, the sodium and potassium levels have dropped back down to levels that were previously seen uh, before the whole uh, issue began. So at this stage, it looks as though the oil cooler change out has not been a wasted exercise, so that's, that's good news. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I do want to trend that issue, so I won't say 100% uh, that the issue is sorted until at least uh, one other sample backs it up, or basically the next sample backs it up. Uh, but for now, I'm fairly happy with the result. So there you have it guys, there's the final follow up for the oil cooler change out. Uh, if you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down, whatever. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.